Shalom, shalom, and greetings from Teshua Community. I am Ima Rafael, and I'm coming to you today, daughters, with another message, a teaching that Rayak has given to me to give only to the daughters of Zion. Not for men, it's for the women only, that you may have strength in these last and evil days. Hallelujah. So the teaching I left off the last time uh, about the elect lady of Torah. And daughters, I want to make a correction where I was saying men can find men. Let me correct that right off the bat. I mean, a man can always find a woman or a wife. In this hour, it's very hard for a woman, especially if she's single and has children, it's difficult for her to find a husband in this hour. The only way she's going to really get a husband is that she's walking in Torah truth and she's a keeper of this truth. And in due time, Yah will send her a righteous man of Yah. Hallelujah. So the, the, the elect lady of this Torah, you say, how do, you, how do we come up, uh, Ema? How do we become that elect lady? By one stipulation, our lives must exemplify Torah truth. And we must pick up the book daily to be fed, that we feed our nephesh, we feed our being, we feed our mind, daughters, that we must be examples as Yahshua HaMashiach is. So you're without any excuse. You can't say, I have nobody I can follow. You follow the Torah. If you listen to the righteous messenger, he will lead and guide you in all truth. And when you have a messenger, he's going to deal with you, me, our sins, that we may cast off everything that's not like Yahshua HaMashiach. We must understand that Yahshua HaMashiach he came to fulfill the book, and he did it. Through much trials, through many trials, and much sufferings, arm yourself likewise. If, you try, if you're going through anything, daughters, and you don't ever overcome, that same trial will come up again and again to you overpower that in your life. And sometimes it may come by fasting and praying, Whatever it takes, daughters, you've got to take it by force. I will not give myself over to the lust of this world, but I will strive daily to be like Yahshua HaMashiach. It's not your outward appearance, daughter, but yet it is your outward appearance. Once you get the clean mind like Yahshua HaMashiach, you will know how to dress, you will know how to speak, you will govern your mind all day long. You will pray all day. And when I say pray all day, daughter, some of you may have jobs that you're going on. But when I say pray, you keep your mind. You say, Yah, help me. Help me make it through the day. Help me to be faithful with the labor that I have set before me. All day, that's what you say. You keep your mind steadfast on Him. You give Yah Todah for the Torah, for the daily lecture that you can apply to your lives. So all day you're praying and saying, Yah, help me. Give me strength. And if you pray that way, he will give you strength. Doris, I just want you all to know that even though I'm in a community setting like this, what do you think I'm doing? Sitting at home, reading the scriptures all day? No, I'm not. I labor. I rise at four in the morning. I give y'all a little space of time. I work out. No, I don't work out like no young woman, but I do work out. I give myself at least 30 to 45 minutes. I work out, I cleanse myself up for the day, I come to the dining hall, I assist with breakfast, I work in the school every day. I prepare uh, work for our children, I, pre uh, I gather lunch for the children, I cook, uh, is it three days a week or four? Four days a week I cook uh, a meal, breakfast or dinner. So I'm never just sitting around twiddling my thumbs. And in the evening, I will pick up the scriptures, daughter, and read. Well, do I don't have to worry about finding anything because I hear the messenger. 
So I can go back over the things that he has taught us here at Teshua. I don't like to sit around idle, daughters. I don't. There are times that I do get tired, and I will sit at my desk, at my, in my computer chair, and I'll nod off for about 10 or 15 minutes. That's how I do it. Hallelujah. So I don't, I always find things to do. I'm a keeper of my home. I like everything to be immaculate. That's me. Hallelujah. And that's how all the daughters should be. I enjoy cooking daughters. I do. I enjoy cooking. And I'm striving to be the head chef in the kingdom of Almighty Yah. I enjoy cooking. I enjoy sewing. So those are things that women, that's our makeup. That's our makeup, daughters. And if you don't take great delight in that, something's wrong with you. Have I always been this way? No, I had to learn these things. So when you hear the righteous elders instruct you, don't say, well, I don't want to do this or I don't like that. You take heed to what the righteous elders instruct you in. I love working with children, so that's why I don't have a problem with working in the school. I get excited when our young ones learn. Yes, I do. I get excited. They're excited, and I'm excited for them. Hallelujah. So let's get back to this elect lady in the Torah. And I want to start with Proverbs, Mishli, chapter 11, verse 16. It says, a gracious lady. And it's, the word gracious comes from the Roman, she is a Roman goddess. That's the Greek term for it. She is pleasant, agreeable, she's precious, she has, uh, she has compassion, she is kind, polite, and she's silver. Daughters, listen to me. When you are that way, others will know that. They will see that. You don't have to tell, well, I'm kind to everybody. I'll do this for that one. I'll, no. When you're that way, others will see that. This woman, she will retain honor. She will retain honor because of her reputation. The reputation that everybody else will see. If you're a hard worker, everybody will know that you're a hard worker. I've worked jobs, daughters. And can I tell you, my rule of thumb was always be at work 30 minutes early because you may have problems with your car. Um, somebody, you may fall sick. Something may happen on the job, so I was always 30 minutes early. When I worked for the school system, the principal would say, you're the first one here. Well, I wasn't the first one. I'd be the second one because the custodian would come first and I would come next. So I've all, because anything could happen. I always thought like that, and I continue to think that way. I always like to be on time. Hallelujah. Now, the actions of an honorable and precious daughter of Zion, she always offer what is precious to anyone. Did you hear me? She won't have just select one she's precious to, but she's precious. She offers precious gifts to everyone. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew, Matthew chapter 26, verse 6. It says, Now when Yahshua was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came to him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on Yahshua's head as he sat at meat. Now remember, she knew the oil that she was putting on Yahshua was very precious and it was costly. And she could have sold it for much. But she weighed out the balance. Hallelujah. And when his disciplined ones saw it, they had indignation, saying, to what purpose is this waste? She, they became angry. They were vexed with this woman. She could have taken that oil and sold it and gave money to the poor. Now these are the ones that Followed Yahshua, his disciplined ones. But can I tell you, this was truly the elect lady because she knew what Yahshua had to suffer. 
not just for her, but for many others. For the ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Yahshua understood it, because he had to think for a moment, when he understood it, he said to them, Why trouble you the woman? For she has wrought a tough work upon me. The woman knew the oil was of a great price. And she understood what Yahweh had said to us. So he had to go through many trials and afflictions, daughters. He was going to go through a lot of pain, a lot of trauma and anxiety. Because remember, before he went to the state, he prayed and he cried and he sweat great drops of tears because it was too heavy. But by her anointing this special man, hallelujah, it was preparing him for what he had to go through. Her ways make her known to all. The example of Boaz acknowledging the duties of a kinsman to marry Ruth, an honorable daughter, is full of virtue, strength, and abilities. Hallelujah. So we want to go to the book of Ruth, and we want to discuss Ruth as being an elect woman of Almighty Yah. Remember, you have to understand Ruth was with her mother-in-law. Her husband had deceased, and she was willing to stay with that mother-in-law. And she was willing to take on the labor of a man to make sure both of them ate. So she couldn't be lazy. She couldn't be shiftless. She couldn't be one that was always late, but she had to look out not only for herself, but she considered her mother-in-law. So we'll go to the book of Ruth, chapter 3, verse 1. Then Naomi, Ruth's mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for you, that it may be well with you? And she was saying to her, daughter, we need to find a husband for you. So you don't have to labor so hard. But Ruth was willing to stay the course and whatever it takes to make sure that my mother is fed daily, I'll take on the challenge. And daughters, we must be that way also. You know, you can say, well, I've been like this all my life, didn't change it. If you have the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach, you can change those things in you. You say, well, I'm just a nasty individual. Well, is a nasty woman going into the kingdom? Or lazy women going into the kingdom? Women that don't care or I don't give a hoot attitude. Are you going into the kingdom? Do you ever consider that? I consider those things, daughters. And I don't want to be found lazy shiftless, not caring, not giving. I don't want to be found that way. Because if you're that way, you're not going into the kingdom. Ruth chapter 3 verse 2. And now is not Boaz our kinsman, with whom maidens you were? Behold, he willows barley tonight in the threshing floor. Wash yourself, therefore, my daughter, and anoint you, and put your garments upon you, and get you down to the floor. But make not yourself known to the man, until he shall have done eating and drinking. She was following the, the instructions of an elder, and as her mother-in-law instructed her, she didn't say, well, I think that's going to be too much. Well, I don't see it that way. No, I got a, a better way. She took heed to what her mother-in-law instructed her in. Verse 4. And it shall be when he lies down that you shall mark the place where he shall lie. And you shall go in and uncover his feet. Remove his shoes so that his rest will be pleasant. And lie you down, and be, and he will tell you what 
you shall do. And she said to her, all that you say to me, mother-in-law, I will do. This is a generation, they don't hear the elders. They see the women, the mothers of Zion, that have a tub and an excellent report. They see those that walk in righteousness. And when they instruct you in what's right to do, you say, oh, you're not talking to me. I got four children. I know what to do. Where you coming from? It don't take all that. But those are the type that will never enter into the kingdom. If they're not going to hear the aged mothers, they're not going to hear the shepherd either. This generation is so corrupt daughters, you're going to have to take it by force. It's going to take, you got to take it by much prayer and much fasting. You say, well, fasting is hard. Well, you know why it's hard? Because we make it hard. But if we say, I can do all things through Yahshua HaMashiach, then you can. So even with me, I have to press more to turn down my plate so that I can hear the messenger and that I can bring this scripture to you, that it may be strength for you in these last and evil days. And she said to her, all that you say to me, my mother-in-law, I will do. And she went down to the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law had instructed her to do. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. And she came softly and uncovered his feet and lay her down. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself and behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your handmaid. Spread therefore your covering over you for you are a near kinsman. And he said, Barak, be you blessed of you, are you of your way, my daughter. For you have shown more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as you follow not young men, whether poor or rich. He said, here you're showing all this kindness to me, you can go find a rich man to take care of you. You can go find a, a poor man to take care of you. But you've chosen me to be kind to. So can I tell you, even by him knowing that, he saw that Ruth was disciplined. And she had learned much from following the instructions of her mother-in-law. Daughters, I'm here to tell you today, if you can only take heed, to yourself, your ways and your actions, and Shemak here, the elect lady, the mother, the Ema, when she instructs you in righteousness, you will truly be blessed on us. You say, will I be blessed with riches? It has nothing to do with riches. It has to do with the understanding of this Torah truth and how we must live it. We must live this Torah truth. You've got to deny yourself. It's not getting the gang, the gang saying of the world, but it's about understanding this truth that makes the mind free and shows you how to present yourself daily before Almighty God. Hallelujah. Verse 11. And now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to you all that you require. For all the city of my people do know, they do know, that you are a virtuous daughter. So even Boaz knew. He knew she wasn't trying to come in there to sleep with him. He knew that. When he saw her, he knew who she was. He just said, identify yourself. She had nothing to fear because she didn't come there to do him any evil. She came to do what was righteous. And daughters, y'all knows our heart. Y'all knows it. 
He has created us that we should obey this truth every day. And we should cast out our undefiled ways every day. So he said the whole city knows that you are a virtuous woman. So whatever you set your heart to do, daughters, you can do it. You just got to set the mind and say, yeah, whatever it takes to please you, I'm willing. You say, well, you're getting old, even, so should you slow down? Slow down for what? No. I prepare my mind every day. Whatever the task is for the day, I want to be there to conquer it. So it's a retire. Retire from what? Well, that's what I do. Sit around twiddling my thumbs, being idle. I want my mind to be idle, daughters. I want to always keep my mind on this truth, this truth that has made me free for me. For me. And I want to be an example, not just so the daughters of Tezion here can see, but that others may see, that others may hear, and say, if she can do it, I can do it too. I want to go to verse 12. And now it is true that I am your near kinsman. Howbeit, there is a kinsman nearer than I. But Boaz told her, tarry this night. And it shall be in the morning that if this other kinsman will perform to you the part of a kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman's part. But if he desires not to do the part of a kinsman to you, then will I do the part of a kinsman to you. As Yahweh lives, lie down until the morning. She didn't say, well, let me get on up, he's talking. No, she heard the man and his, his instructions, and she obeyed. That's our problem today, daughters. We don't want to obey. We don't want to hear anybody. We think because, oh, well, you went to college, you know it all. Now, well, you don't know it all. Because college does not teach you how to live toward truth. You get book learning. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You can boast in that, but what profit is it? What profit? Hallelujah. So now we want to talk about the honorable daughter, how she stands in the same beauty of wisdom. The virtue is known by Almighty Yahweh. So daughters, can I tell you, when you have an experience with Almighty Yahweh, as the years go by, you gain just a little bit more wisdom and understanding of this truth. If you practice this every day, if you don't practice sin, you practice this Torah, it brings about a little wisdom. You know, I thought I had wisdom when I was 45, but I realized I didn't have much. And as I got reached the goal of 50, I'm like, okay, I'm learning a little bit more. I have a little more patience. And I've seen this before, I've seen that before, so I know how to handle it now. So with aging and walking in righteousness, your understanding becomes a little more clearer and you can hear from Yah and you understand how to rightly divide this truth. Wisdom chapter 4 verse 1 it says better it is to have no children and to have virtue for the memorial thereof is immortal because it is known with Yahweh and with men. Daughters, when you are virtuous, when you have committed unto Almighty Yah, there is a beauty that you will behold. And it's not this beauty is not by putting on jewelry. Jewelry does not make you beautiful. Putting on makeup does not make you beautiful. Your beauty, because Torah says so, your beauty comes from obeying the Torah truth. You know, when I look at myself, I do, I see an aged woman. I don't see a pretty woman or a cute woman. I see an aged woman that takes great delight in obeying this Torah truth. That's all, that I get excited about that. That I'm striving every day to please Almighty God. I have a husband, an ish, so I'm not concerned with what other men think, as long as I'm pleasing to the ish that I have, that's all that matters. As long as I live peaceable with him, 
He is my head. He instructs me what to do and what not to do. There are times he said, well, I don't like the way you said that. What do I do? Rise up and say, who do you think you are? I said, all right, honey, whatever you tell me, that I will do. I will do. Because I do. I want to please Almighty Yah, but I want to please my ish, too. He's not going to tell me anything wrong to do. That he will not. And when you have a true man of Yah in your life, he won't tell you anything to hurt you. We just need to learn to be disciplined. And you can't have everything you want, daughters. That's not discipline. Hallelujah. All right, let me finish this up. It says, it is known with Yahweh and with man. When, you're, when you obey Torah truth, others will see that. Yah knows it, and other men will see all. also. It says, when it is present, men take example. When you are obeying Torah, men and women will say, okay, there's something different about her. They will notice it. And when it is gone, they will desire it. Virtue wears a crown. When you are virtuous, when you are a virtuous daughter, it wears a crown. When they say, well, okay, we, we have a job we need to do here to sure. We're going to put this door in that door. You know the daughters are going to get it done. You're not going to get the one that's lazy, the one that's never on time. You're not going to choose her. But the ones you know that's going to get it done, those are the ones you're going to select. Remember, y'all has a group of select. They're the very elect. You say, oh, he's picking. Y'all knows from the beginning those that are going to be, that are going to get the job done. Those that are going to strive to be like Yahshua. Hamashiach. So he does have a very elect group of people that obey this truth. It says, um, virtue wears a crown and triumphs forever, having gotten the victory, striving for undefiled rewards. We are striving, daughters, for undefiled rewards. And our rewards are understanding this Torah and walking in it every day. It says, but the multiplying of the wicked shall not strive, nor take deep rooting from bastard slips, nor lay any fast foundation. For though they flourish in branches for a time, yet standing insecurely, they shall be shaken with the wind, and through the force of the winds, they shall be uprooted. Those that are just putting on or pretending and say it don't take all that, it's the wheat and the tear, they grow together. But your way shall send the reapers to do the separating. Hallelujah. The imperfect branches shall be broken off. Their fruit unprofitable, not ripe to eat. Yes, meat for nothing. For the children begotten of unlawful beds are witnesses of wickedness against their parents when Yahweh examines them in their trials. But though the righteous be prevented with death, shall, yet shall he be in rest. Honorable age is not that which stands in length of time, nor that is measured by number of years. But wisdom is the gray hair to men, and an unspotted life is old age. Hallelujah. So, doors, I want to keep my life unspotted from the world, that I may help some daughter along this way. And we all should have that same mindset that we want to be examples, that when we strengthen other daughters, hallelujah, we keep our lives unspotted and we strive, hallelujah, daily. He pleased Yahweh and was beloved of him, so that living among sinners, he was translated, hallelujah. 
The crown that a husband wears is his virtuous wife. Did you hear that, daughters? The crown that your husband wears is his virtuous wife. And others speak highly of her. When they see her, they know that that is Zakain, Yeramiah's wife. She's faithful, she's committed, she's disciplined. Her children, they're obedient. When she stands and she makes a head count, they're all counted for. Hallelujah. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. But she that makes a shame is as rottenness in his bones. He hates he married her. He doesn't even know what to do with her. He can't say, wife, you know, if you could just be quiet. You don't tell me what to do. I'm my own woman. That's rottenness to his bones. But that virtuous woman, she will study to be quiet. She'll say, yes, Ish, you're right. Okay, I'll do it the way you have instructed me to do it. That's why Ruth was blessed. Do you hear me? That's why Ruth was blessed. True honor expresses in her beauty of honor, honorable attitude. Even your daughters, listen, your attitude is honorable. Yes, it is. When, you when you're looking for beauty, you're looking for the, the I guess, the, the hair and the makeup, that's not it. That's just a worldly woman. Costly, that's just the way of the world. But you understanding this toward truth and covering yourself as unto Almighty Yah, we cover ourselves. We're not trying to make a fashion statement. Yes, listen to me, doors. I say, I love pretty shoes. But can I tell you, I'm not going to wear no three inch heels. I'm not, because that's silly, that's foolishness. And then, can I just walk on a rock and fall and break my ankle? So we should know how to dress, what to put on, and what not to put on. And when the aged woman tells you that you should take a certain item off, take, don't talk sassy. Just say, yes, ma'am, you're right. Truth. Hallelujah. All right. It says, um, they that fear Yahweh are sure seed. When you fear, this is coming from Sharat, chapter 10, verse 19. They that fear Yahweh are a sure seed, and they that love him, an honorable plant, an honorable planted daughter. When you honor Almighty Yah, you fear him, and you will listen to the elders, and you will take heed to you. Who is unworthy of honor? They that regard not the Torah are a dishonorable seed. They that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed. Did you hear me, daughters? When you don't hear the elders, when you don't hear the emas, you are a dishonorable seed. And we don't look at it that way. We think that we can just go on and do things the way we want to do it. It is wrong. It's wrong. We must hear the aged men. We must hear the aged mothers. Sharat 10 and 20. It says, Among brethren, he that is chief is honorable. And those who fear Yahweh are worthy of honor in his eyes. When you fear Almighty Yahweh, you are worthy. And he will make you the head. He will make you the head. Do you hear me? You can't make yourself the head. You can't join yourself to a group of righteous people and you're doing every corrupt thing there is. You're going to always stand out. You're going to always stumble and fall. And until you take heed to you and your ways, you will never be, you will never be chief. And those that are chief, they serve. They serve the people. Did you hear me? You're not waiting for somebody to hand something out to you. You serve the people. Hallelujah. So among brethren, he that is chief is honorable. The fear of Yahweh goes before the obtaining of authority. Did you all hear that? The fear of Yahweh goes before the obtaining of authority. 
When you fear Almighty Yahweh, you become the head and you will retain authority. But rudeness and pride is the losing thereof. When you're rude, nobody can tell you anything. You just, when somebody just tick you off, you just blow up like a time bomb. You're never going to be in charge of anything. You're rude. You're dishonorable. You're disagreeable. Nobody wants to be, can I tell you, when you're on a job, nobody wants to be around anyone like that. You'll separate yourself from that one. Unless you just like that. You just like to hang out with a bunch of rumbunctious people. But rudeness and pride is the losing thereof. You're going to miss out on Almighty God. Verse 22. Whether he be rich, noble, or poor, their honor is the fear of Yah. If the rich man fears Almighty Yah, there is honor. If the noble one follow, fears Almighty Yah, there is honor. If the poor man fears Almighty Yah, there is honor. And I have respect for those, hallelujah, that fear Almighty Yah. It is not right to disperse an intelligent poor man, I'm sorry, to despise an intelligent poor man, nor is it proper to honor a sinful man. You know that a poor woman that is doing that which is righteous, and you choose your wicked sister over that righteous sister, she can, you can, she can say anything in front of you. She's just loose all the time. But that righteous sister, you're going to stay on her, but you never tell your wicked sister what's righteous to do. That's not right. Hallelujah. For the eyes of Almighty Yahweh are in the earth. They, he beholds the evil and the tough. Praise Yah. Verse 25. To the servant that is wise, shall they that are free do service? And he that has understanding will not grudge when he is reformed. So the servant, for the servant that does wise, he shouldn't do any kind of service. He should just sit at home studying the Torah all day, right? No, he should serve. He should serve the people. Our shepherd serves the people. Reb Dawi studies, but can I tell you, he goes out and labor too. So he serves the people. Zakane Yeromia, our young leader, he goes out, he works five days a week. And he serves the people. He studies this Torah that he may feed the people lecher, that we may be able to stand. Hallelujah. Shirak 26. Be not overwise when you do your work, nor exalt and boast not yourself in the time of your distress. Don't be overwise, daughters. If there's a job set out for you to do every day, do it. Be faithful. Be committed. If you're the disciplined ones of Almighty Yah, you discipline yourself. You commit to do it and you do it faithfully. Can I tell you, if you, even if you're supposed to sweep the floor every day in the dining hall, and you have to do it, then you're not committed. If you're supposed to clean the bathrooms once a week, and you say, well, I'm going to let this week skip by, then you're not faithful. The bathrooms must be done. And if it's your job, you should do it with all your heart, all you've been Do it right. Do it right. Hallelujah. Better is he that labors. Oh my. Did you all hear that? Let me say it again. Better is he that labors. We must labor, daughters, with your hands. You must labor and abound in all things that he that boasts himself and wants bread. You're just boasting what you could have done, what you would have done, but you didn't do it. We labor here, daughters. I know those that are faithful and committed, and I know those that don't really particularly care. Hallelujah. You must give yourself completely over to a great performance unto Almighty God every day of your life. If you want a job, 
Can I tell you? You're on a job and you want that raise. You give that employer a great performance. So the one that has created you, wouldn't you give him a great performance? Why, sure you should. We are on a job. We've got a test set before us. And we, we must give it a great performance. Hallelujah. Shirak 29. Who would justify the man that sins against his own nephesh? Who's going to justify him? Say, well, yeah, let me explain. Not me. I got enough just dealing with me. I don't even want to explain my situation. Because I know I can do all things through Yahshua. It says, and who will honor the man that dishonors his own life? Who will? If you dishonor yourself, daughters, you dishonor Almighty Yah. If you don't care about anything, you dishonor Almighty Yah. Say, well, that's just how I am. I'm lazy like this. My man made me this way. Well, come out of it. It's not the ways of Yah. You dishonor Almighty Yah by even saying that out of your mouth. I would never walk around saying I'm lazy or I have to do everything. No, I'm an overcomer every day. And that's how we should be also. Yah has created us that we may walk in His honor. That we can do all things to please Him. Verse 30. A poor man is honored for his knowledge and for his skill. While a rich man is honored for his riches. I'd rather be that poor man with the understanding of Torah truth. Because when you have no riches, what are you going to do? Hallelujah. Can't, you can't buy your way into the kingdom anywhere, daughters. He that is honored in poverty, how much more in riches? And he that is dishonored in riches, how much more in poverty? Hallelujah. The true picture of an honorable mother and how her beauty is expressed is upon the husband man in the training of his sons, the wife of the faithful Eleazar, the clothing of each of the sons. And I'm going to stop there because this will be part three. But daughters, I want to encourage you that every day to be that elect lady of this living Torah truth, we must examine our own heart. We must, everything that doesn't please Almighty Yah, we must cast it down. You can discipline yourself by much prayer and turning down your plate. I commission every daughter this day that we seek Yah with a whole heart and realize when we disobey the messengers, the elders, the emas that walk in righteousness, when you disobey, you dishonor Almighty Yah. I've been young and now I'm old. And when I came into the knowledge of the truth, there was an old mother, her name was Mother Dorsey. And the thing she told me, I took heed to. And this was back in 1978. Did you hear me? In 1978, she told me how to dress, how to honor my head, how to be a keeper of my home, and never did I thought, think of her as that was too much. I just knew I had been out there in the world. To me, I had been out there a long time. And I wanted to be made free. I just didn't know how to become free. But once I heard this truth, it made me free. Free from me. Free from my own wicked ways. And doors, we have to understand we do things that are wicked. When you disrespect the elders, you disrespect Almighty Yah. So we must examine our own hearts, look at ourselves and say, Yah, I know I need to come up. I need, I need Yah's help every day. All day long. You can pray all day long. No, you don't set four hours aside. I don't even know how a daughter can set four hours aside just to study. When you're a keeper of your home, when you're working with your children, when you have meals to prepare. We make a menu here at Teshua Community. 
So use our, my daughter, the, the camera woman. We sit, she and I together, we prepare a menu for the week. We go to the building, we see what supplies we have. So we'll know when we go out the next time what we need to get. We work together. And can I tell you, she's faithful as a time clock. She's very faithful. I told her, y'all, for I don't know what I would do without her. So she's helped me along this way. And those we should be helpers one of another. No, you shouldn't sit back and watch her work or sit back and watch me work. You get in and you work with me. You don't just come to work on special occasions. We work every day. We work. The only day we don't work is on the Shabbat. We sit in the bayette to hear from the messenger that we may be taught. And then we go back and we examine Torah for ourselves, for our strength, for our being, for our honor unto Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. So I told Yah that I'm able to come to you at this time. To exalt you daughters just one more time. We have more scriptures that I will get back. Hallelujah. Like you have to understand, I'm always busy. And I have my ish, Rhea, that I have to assist. Hallelujah. And I have to wait on him just a little bit. And I take great delight that I do have a husband. And he loves me much. Hallelujah. Well, what about you? Can, you can look at my, just look in the camera, look at my, I love Rhea much. He's me, and I'm him. And I've learned much from him. Hallelujah. So we told you again for all that he's done for us this day. When you saw the garden, he's been doing the videos of the garden, those raised beds. We eat from those raised beds. And now as I'm getting older, I have health issues. So I'm trying to eradicate that by eating more greens. That's what I'm doing now, eating more greens in its raw state. I eat a little cook, but most, most of my greens I eat it in its raw state. Hallelujah. Because greens are for the healing of the body. I understand that. So I have to be more faithful with doing just that. So Yahweh Baruch you daughters, this is for the daughters of Zion. These are scriptures that Rea Dawid has given me to give you. And I pray that it is a strength to you. And we'll see you next time. If you like the content that you're getting, give the video a thumbs up. And we will see you next time. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Shalom, shalom. I'm Ima Rafael. Shalom. Yahweh Baruch you.